puppet porn. So in September of 2019, I went to Atlanta, Georgia for a very, very brief pit stop uh, to visit my friends at Dragon Con and kind of just screw around for a day. And while there, I went to the Museum of Puppetry Arts, which I'm pretty sure is the right name for it. I don't remember, but either which way, it was a really cool experience, and I learned a lot about the art of puppetry and how it's been around for a long, long time. It's an amazing art form, and it's capable of so much. And of course, if you love puppetry, you've probably been a fan of things like The Muppets and Sesame Street and that weird Melissa McCarthy movie that nobody liked. Maybe you're a fan of that. I don't know. But either which way, one thing we can all agree on is... Puppet porn is a beautiful thing. And you know, there's a lot of things that I love, including puppets. Um, I love movies. I love cult film. I love vinegar syndrome. I love owning this shirt. I love so many things, but amongst them, one thing that I truly, without any irony in my system, and that's not in itself an ironic statement, truly, I love Let My Puppets Come. Yes, before Meet the Feebles, before even the original Muppet movie, there was Let My Puppets Come. And this is a staggering achievement in filmmaking that I'm going to go over in great detail with you today. Usually I don't talk about spoilers, I don't go through the entire movie, I want you to experience that for yourself, but this is one of those films that I firmly believe is so good and so entertaining and so necessary to have on your shelf that I think even if I go through every single plot detail, which I'm not going to, that'd be very boring, I think you would still want to own this movie. I think you would still want to see this movie and I think you should before you even watch this review, buy this movie. Uh, details in the description uh, where you can get this. There's no affiliation or anything. It's just, I really like this movie. Uh, but we're going to talk about it right now. Uh, of course, like with all good things, this story starts with Deep Throat. In 1972, former hairdresser turned filmmaker Gerard Damiano revolutionized porn with his breakthrough film, Deep Throat. <laughs> Now, you might just know Deep Throat as a joke or a cute reference, but that doesn't do justice to the impact the film had on pop culture. This was a film that inspired numerous obscenity court cases, something that's hard to believe in an age where you can log onto Pornhub and jerk it to just about whatever you please, including Deep Throat. But just as it was impactful from a cultural perspective, it was also impactful artistically. While the Mitchell brothers and other adult filmmakers were in the midst of popularizing more artistic, narrative-driven adult films, it was Deep Throat that captured the public's imagination. All across America, your average Dick and Jane realized that pornographic films could work both as porn and as, well, films. I could go on, but the point is that Deep Throat was important and unique, and Damiano would certainly keep it up with the rest of his career, even if, at the end of the day, his dreams of the adult film industry transforming into a more widely accepted Hollywood-like entity would never come to pass. Peter Bart describes the eventual transition best in the documentary Inside Deep Throat. Part of it, I think, that was lost is just a certain innocence. For that, that brief moment, porn was part of discovery, curiosity, change. Today, it's different. In 1975, Damiano embarked on another venture, the story of Joanna. This tale of a sadomasochistic relationship, while not as famous as Deep Throat or his other noted classic, The Devil and Miss Jones, is nonetheless another jewel in Damiano's crown. And, well, we don't care about that. We care about puppets and how they fuck. Poor thing. I'm so horny. Let My Puppets Come was originally produced as a short film to accompany the story of Joanna. My best guess is that Damiano thought it would be a good balance considering how serious Joanna is versus how aggressively silly Puppets is. However, something must have sparked his imagination while directing a giant phallus singing opera because the final runtime wound up sitting at a decidedly non-short 73 minutes. My American Eventually, it would be whittled down to a scant 43 minutes and accompany Damiano's 1977 film, Odyssey. Let My Puppets Come starts with Gerard Damiano himself on a busy New York street buying a hot dog. Who saddles up next to him for a frank but this little guy? Meet Jimmy. He's a courier played by Robert Redfoot, which is one of the few puns in the opening titles that I honestly just don't get. I mean, obviously Robert Redford, but Redfoot? Is that even a pun of something? But hey, classics like Anthony Quim and Clitoris Leachman make up for that. I also love how Damiano shows up in the credits being puppeted by a puppet. Dude had a great sense of humor. Dive! Dive! Motherfucker. <laughs> Today, Jimmy has a special delivery that's going to change his little felt life forever. Uh, presumably. 
I love how these normal folks in the background are just wondering what the fuck these weirdos are going to do with that puppet. Jimmy arrives at Creative Concept Systems and Procedures Brothers Limited Incorporated, a business name that's so convoluted and silly that of course we have to listen to an entire song about it. Brothers Unlimited Inc. Yeah, yeah that's, that's us. us. Good, because I have a telegram for you. <laughs> Don't look related, but we're very elated, and we're greatly understated when we say... Yep, in addition to being a puppet porno, this is also a musical. Because of course it is. The brothers, by the way, are Fred, Ned, and Red. We believe in nepotism. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Prism. Check Damiano and crew finding it challenging to rhyme something with nepotism. Come on, guys. Jism. It's right there. Jism. We find out through this expository song that some guy named Mr. Big loaned them the money to start the business. Upon finishing their song, we learn that the brothers put all their money on Big League Bocce. We mustn't give up. Big League Bocce's gonna sweep the country. For those not in the know, this is Bocce. Not a good investment, guys. May I take a message? Mm -hmm. They don't get the half million to me in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. I'll take them one by one. Mm -hmm. And blow their fucking brains out. Well, so he gets the message. And thank you for calling. Say hello to Miss Fit. Bye. You guys is dead. And so the boys have one day to figure out a new way to make money. Luckily, Jimmy's been hanging out the whole time, and he has the perfect solution. You guys are creative, aren't you? Sure. Yeah. Goddamn right. Well, there's only one way to make that kind of money in 24 hours. Make a porno flick. A dirty movie. You can put together a dynamite fuck film. <laughs> the boys don't seem to quite get the idea, so Jimmy offers up an idea for a scene, and uh... Oh. Another lonely Saturday night. Stood up again. Men are so horrid. Hmm. Oh, but I couldn't. You're a dog. Movie. So, I've had all my shots. Oh. I'm attractive. Oh. And I'm a purebred cocker. You are? Oh. Easy to please. Discreet. You don't have to do a thing, sweetheart. Uh, it's worth noting that while the clip is literally all just... Uh, I'm pretty sure I can't show this on YouTube, so let's just say that the filmmakers had the attention to detail to give the dog a big ol' set of doggy balls, because a dog can't fuck a woman with a raging red rod without the necessary equipment. That just, that's, that's just science. Anyway, Jimmy thinks his idea is top-notch, but the brothers disagree. Boys, we'll get a lot of heat from the Humane Society. Yeah, Fred's right. What about you, Gramps? Got any ideas? I've got some great ideas. How about this? Guys walking down the street. Ramp sees a sign for nude photos and is uh, immediately assaulted by three big titted puppets. It's here that we get our first proper felt boner. So for those keeping count, we've now gotten puppet fuck scenes with a dog and an elderly man, which just pure class. It's a swell fantasy, Gramps, but it's just not believable. The audience will never buy it. Red then gives us his own fantasy, in which he's sucked off by a nurse in a classic scene, which features the technical innovation I'm sure you are all hoping for, a puppet ejaculating, something I definitely can't show on YouTube. This all ends with a glorious double punchline. Doctor, who was that masked lady? I, I wanted to thank her. Why, sir, that was no masked lady. That was the head nurse. <laughs> Get it? The head nurse? And he, and he dies? He, yeah. Okay, so now we've had a dog, an elderly man, and a fatally ill dude all get laid. What's next? Well, fish fucking. Fish fucking is the answer to that question. We'll, uh, we'll title it, uh, Deep Trout. <laughs> Gramps decides they need help, so he naturally calls up his old friend Geppetto. While they wait, Jimmy runs off to nab a cameraman. The boys are excited to find out their secretary, Miss Bliss, wants to audition for the film, and this leads to, uh... I'm sure you're aware, Miss Bliss, that we can't hire an actress without <laughs> an audition. I understand. Come and get it, boys! Oh, Wait a minute! 
Has a one of you guys left your cock in there? Or Miss Bliss is a boy? Nobody's perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jimmy goes to his old friend Lash, an old film director turned sex shop owner. I'm working with a bunch of greenhorns on a fuck film. We need a great cameraman. How about it? Geppetto has just arrived to help our boys out, and he's brought his son. Ah, this must be Pinocchio. How do you do, sir? Well, feel free to nose around, little boy. Ooh. You can probably guess where this is going. Oh, Pinocchio, you're so good. <laughs> Geppetto sets about building a cast for the film, utilizing his horrifying human hands and the power of teamwork. It's here that we get the second most horrifying moment in the film, in which Geppetto builds a woman, and, uh... We'll just watch. Is this a joke? Who made these tits? I wouldn't be caught dead in these tits. Hey, you pretty sexy for an old guy. You want a party? This right here, this is the second most horrifying visual in the whole movie. Eventually, he does finish his creation, and we get to this black puppet whose fictional actress is named Diana Boss. Get it? And using her own horrifying human hands, made all the more disturbing by the lack of gloves, she sings Geppetto a song to help him get through production. And honestly, it's, it's pretty good, and goes down an odd path. We get footage from the beach spliced in, including shots of children playing. There's also this joke, which I can't tell whether it's hilarious, mortifying, or offensive. Uh, no! No, that's all wrong! Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Poor Cade no los tres. With the cast ready, the gang gets about filming. I love the detail of having Fred using a copy of the American Cinematographer's Manual to operate the camera. It's little touches like this that raise this movie above most porno parodies. At this point, we get into a series of scenes with Lash trying to direct his motley crew. This includes his frustrations with the costuming, the producers pitching their terrible ideas, and a giant anthropomorphic opera singing phallus named Prick, as well as this monstrosity. Buy peaches and cream, girl. Your form and face are surpassed the human race. <laughs> now, remember, I said Geppetto's in between puppet was the second most horrifying thing in the film. This thing is the third. That's how fucked up this movie gets. Fred, disturbed by impending failure and nonstop sex, heads to a bar for some quiet time. He's promptly harassed by this very enthusiastic stripper. After Fred gets into an altercation with a barfly, he's helped by the stripper. <laughs> Where am I? My place. You were not cold. Hey, that's quite some bump you got there. Oh, it hurts too. I was talking about the bump between your legs, sweetheart. Tell me, how are you hung anyway? Oh, I'm not hung at all. Marionettes are hung. I'm a hand puppet. Of course, puppet on human sex isn't the easiest thing on a small budget, so the stripper asks to be spanked, and uh... My dear, it's truly smashing! God damn, this movie's weird. And as if that wasn't enough, we then learn that Fred's kink is, uh, wearing women's underwear and getting hit with grapes. Huh. Despite all of this hijinks, CCSPBLI successfully finishes the film, and they start editing. We get a look at some bits and bobs, including a commercial with this fun jingle. Isn't that sweet, you little moneymaker, you? Use new sweet fish every day, keep that skunky cunt away. Use new sweet fish every day, keep that skunky cunt away. Sweet fish. After that, we get a watch commercial, which is equally fun. A climax watch, still ticking after four years, three months, and two days. Climax, it takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Climax? Bullshit! You better take another look down there! My watch was a pulsar! <laughs> Even porn legend Al Goldstein makes a silly cameo before we return to the brothers, who are interrupted by Mr. Big! And he's a dwarf! His wives don't look glad to see me, boys. 
because easy joke. Luckily for our boys, Mr. Big is stopped for the moment by his one weakness. You guessed it, a puppet blowjob. I got him, run! Get him off for me! No, wait, wait. You can run, but you can't hide. I'll see you creeps in your office in one hour. By the way, for those playing Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon who need to connect a mainstream actor to a porn star, actor Louis de Jesus? Huh. Also played an Ewok in Return of the Jedi. He was also Ralphus in Bloodsucking Freaks. So, uh, now you know. But wait! That's not the only notable actor in this flick. In fact, we have another Disney connection that's even bigger. You're not going to believe this until you do. But this movie features, in a prominent role, the voice of Jafar. Yep, the man puppeteering Madam is none other than Jonathan Freeman, who apparently started his career as a puppeteer and got his first role in Let My Puppets Come. Him, come to Mama him, blow in his ear, on the on his rear. He's right for plucky. Learn your sex electric, do it. Or Ali, you better be uh, the sensuous woman. My life is but to serve you, my lord. After another shockingly fun musical number, Madam commits to helping the brothers finish their film and save their company, using the only tool she has. Nightmare fuel. In case it's not obvious, this is the most horrifying moment in the film. This is what Lovecraft's protagonists see when they wax on about unspeakable horrors. This thing is fucking grotesque. It's such a terrifying visual that it took me way too long to realize there are three vaginas with legs dancing behind whatever the fuck that is. Luckily, we are all saved by the police who arrive to arrest everyone for making porn. Our present predicament severely limits our fundraising mobility. Yep, you're, you're not wrong, Fred. It would appear this was all just meant to pad the runtime, though, since they are immediately let out due to, quote, social redeeming value, which I'm not even sure what that means, but whatever. Bunch of poivoids social redeeming my ass. Fucking is fucking. Six months pass. Presumably Mr. Big has been getting sucked off this whole time. The brothers are now successful pornographers, and Gerard Damiano himself announces, well... I don't believe this shit. The winner is... The Last Porno Flick! <laughs> yep, the puppets made a porno in a day and won an Oscar. As such, they're now all rich and live happily ever after. Which, uh, you know what? It's a more inspiring story than Green Book, so why not? And that's it. That's the end. Credits roll and... Hey, wait a minute. Back up. Rewind. Uh, pause. No fucking way. Alan Silvestri, composer of the highest grossing film of all time, composed and scored two of the songs in Let My Puppets Come. Wow. That's a lot of Disney for one porno. Let My Puppets Come is a legitimately fun and memorable little comedy. It's hardly a porno, since technically no sex actually occurs, and the musical numbers and jokes are mostly well put together, which they fucking should be. And there you have it. That is the story of Let My Puppets Come. This Blu-ray, by the way, uh, let's see here, let me just show it to you real quick. This is less important. This is a great Blu-ray. I, I did crack mine at some point. I don't know how that happened, but it makes me sad. I need to get a new Blu-ray case for this. Uh, anyway, um, I cracked it while fucking, <laughs> yeah, fucking Christ, why do I do this on camera? Oh, Jesus. Pretty cool stuff. Um, it's uh, scanned and restored from in 2K from 35 millimeter. Um, it says archival elements, so I guess they're uh, they couldn't get their hands on the original negative. Shocking, I know. Let's see audio commentary with Heather Drain and Sam Deegan. This is actually this is a really good commentary. Uh, again, just more recommendations. Uh, audio conversation with a puppeteer and puppet designer. Um, audio from a production of the musical Kumquat. So Kumquats uh, was a musical that I guess gave Gerard Damiano his inspiration for the film. Uh, the plots are not really similar at all, but the basic idea of 
a, a puppet musical that uh, takes a bit of a shit on the porn or kind of makes fun of the porn industry uh, is the the main through line there. And then uh, you also get an audio conversation with the Kumquats director, Nicholas Coppola, uh, that's moderated by film historian Casey Scott. And then, you know, original theatrical trailer and subtitles and all that shit. Uh, so, goddamn, just highly recommend Let My Puppets Come. Uh, I really think that you will dig this title. So, with that being said, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, you can follow me on the social medias, on Twitter, at Michael Keen, on Facebook, uh, fucking URL, Michael Keen Filmmaker, which, because I couldn't get any other good fucking URL. Instagram, at MB Keen. And, uh, of course, patrons, uh, please, uh, if you don't already, support me on Patreon. I currently have, I think, six pa Actually, let's, let's check out the live feed. So I currently have seven patrons, um, so I just want to send out some thanks first off. Um, one of them is still my wife, so thank you, Casey. I love you, honey bun. Uh, Michael Stallings uh, is an old friend of mine. Thank you so much for helping me out, Michael. Uh, da -da -da. Flora. Flora is one of my first fans. She found me through Fatal Future when we showed it at Dragon Con uh, two years ago. I'm still flabbergasted by that whole experience. Uh, thank you so much, Flora. You're amazing. Uh, Italian Dan, I'm not... Thank you, Italian Dan. <laughs> uh, Juan Motoa, I still don't know how to say your last name, but I'm going to say Motoa. Uh, please correct me uh, in the comments, uh, uh, Juan. Uh, Nathan Bryant, thank you so much, Nathan. And, of course, Roxy Pepper, who I believe is... Yes, my newest supporter, Roxy, uh, is an old, old, old friend of mine from back in the days when I first was trying to make it big on the YouTubes. Uh, that didn't work out. Let's hope this one does. Thank you so much. I can't believe I have all these patrons already. I was expecting this to go absolutely nowhere. Uh, so please, uh, if you would like to support me, go to my Patreon. Uh, all it takes is $3 a month and you get uh, bonus content. You get videos ahead of time as long as I uh, make them ahead of time. Sometimes I do wind up finishing a video at the very last minute, but for example, this one, uh, I'm finishing it on a Saturday. It's going out Thursday. All the patrons are going to get it tonight on Saturday because I love them. Uh, thank you so much. Can't wait to make more videos at your faces, and please, for the love of all that is good in this world, go watch a movie!